Welcome to coverage of the semifinals of Grand Prix Indianapolis. Maria Bartholdi in the booth, joined by Kenji Igashira. Steve Rubin versus Kyle Bogomez. Steve Rubin on a red-white deck. Kyle Bogomez on green-white. No two-drop for Kyle, notably two-drop here for Steve. And it's one of the flavor favorite of many players this weekend, Firebrand Archer. Yeah, surprising that Kyle didn't have a two-drop. That's kind of what he was planning to do in this deck. He must have kept a, a more solid you know, heavier hand, as you can see the turn three unwavering initiate here. I wonder if Steve's going to be happy to just attack in. It didn't look like he had too many non-creature spells in his deck, so we'll have to see if he wants to, wants to do that. Firebrand Archer can be responsible for quite a lot of damage, although uh, Steve Rubin holding uh, three mountains in hand. <laughs> Ooh, Vizier of the True pulled to the front there. And it looks like that's a Jero's resolve as well. So not a lot of action in Steve's hand, unfortunately. Yeah, looks, like, looks like he might be happy, content with trading three damage for two damage in favor of Kyle. Uh, you know, knowing that Kyle has access to at least three ambuscades, uh, ambuscades rather, uh, I doubt he pulls off that Jero's resolve. But I mean, he did mulligan. He might yep. figure that he needs to do it. The problem is unwavering initiate has, is just so much value. Like. Even if it dies here, Kyle has access to the Embalm, should he get five mana. Firebrand Archer, meanwhile, getting in for two, knocking Kyle down to 18. Unwavering Initiate will hit Steve for three here, Vigilant. And you'll see Steve didn't even consider using the Resolve there. Probably going to cycle it. No, 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 not. no. Hanging on to it for the time being. Could also be used to save his Vizier of the True, which we know is in his hand. True Heart Twins uh, was the draw there for Steve. He, he has, has two in his deck. Yes, he does. He has two. One came back on the wheel, mm. even though he did consider, I think, at least from what it looked like, taking it. In comes the Firebrand Archer once again. Yeah, those True Heart Twins stacking is, is pretty gross. If he can assemble any number of exerters, then... Yeah, and he does have that Vizier of the True, so if it right. survived... Effectively giving a trumpet blast to his team, or uh, I guess Pursuit of Glory in this case. Which of these two decks do you like, Kenji? Um, I think I like Kyle's deck a little bit better. Why is that? He's got better overall creatures, I think. Sure, Steve has the Glory Bringer, but Kyle's just got a more solid game plan, and he's got more tricks. And here's one of them right now, saving Grace on the Unwavering Initiate. And it's just so bad for Steve. Like He doesn't want to use the yeah. Jero's Resolve here. It only saves his creature. It doesn't kill... Kyle's. Yeah, not worth it. And he still wants to develop out his Vizier of the True this turn, so. All right, so Firebrand Archer goes down, and there's a Vizier of the True for Steve. Passes the turn back to Kyle, that unwavering initiate, wearing that saving grace. Yeah. Just unkillable. 3-5 <laughs> Vigilance. I know, I imagine Kyle probably has another trick in his hand. Um, he knows Steve has two open fire, so, you know, Unwavering Initiate, Saving Grace on the stack. Yep. Steve Rubin uses an open fire. Kyle uses like an act of heroism or a gift of strength. Right. He's not going to leave himself open to that large of a blowout. Steve Rubin falling to 14. Bitterbow Sharpshooters at the follow-up play there for Kyle. No. All right, five mana. Yeah, I think he's, he drew the Emberhorn Minif Minotaur for the turn, which will be good with the Jera's Resolve, but... Uh, Kyle's just, you know, advancing the board state, better creatures, winning the race. I tell you what would be good here. Glory burner. That would be okay, I think. Yeah, not yeah. Bad. You know, not bad. Kill not a bad. Kill four, four vigilance reach. Offer five mana. Get in for four damage while you're at it. Oh, yeah. actually, he'd get in for seven, wouldn't he? Because... <laughs> the exert on the glory bringer would yeah. kill the bitter bow, and then the <laughs> the trigger of the vizier would uh, tap down the unwavering. Well, Steve Rubin is trying to still advance his game plan here. True Heart Twins hit the table alongside that vizier of the true. And Kyle, now that Steve's tapped out, might fire off one of these. Yeah, here we go. It's almost like he will never not have it. Right. <laughs> he has three. <laughs> down go the True Heart Twins. It's going to be very hard for Steve to win this game now without peeling off that glory bringer. But even if he does, we're under the assumption that Kyle has another combat trick. Right. 
Emberhorn Minotaur, like you said, in Steve's hand. Going to be the play here, and they will just pass the turn back to Kyle. Steve Rubin on six. <laughs> oh, well, one ambuscade. How about another one? Yeah, and he's almost certainly going to have to use the resolve at this point. Yep, Jero's resolve here from Steve to save that Emberhorn Minotaur. This keeps the Minotaur alive, which can trade with the Bitterbow Sharpshooters, but, I mean, the ball's in Steve's court. Kyle is just pressuring, pressuring, pressuring. Kyle here... Going to keep the pressure on, attacking with his two vigilant creatures, unwavering initiate and bitterbow, sh bitterbow sharpshooters. Yeah, the best part is both of Kyle's creatures have vigilance, so they're great on offense and defense. I mean, Steve can make the obvious block of yeah. four power creature on four power creature. But where does that leave him? You know? Yeah, both players down to one card in hand. I know Steve's is a mountain. I mean, do you block in this situation? Oh, yeah, I mean, you have to trade and hope to draw something real nice. Yeah. I mean, that unwavering initiate is just has so much toughness. Yeah, another, the second True Heart Twins would be good. Glorybringer would be okay. And here's this trick oh, no, that he we had uh, too. assumed Kyle had. Yep, act of heroism here. We'll eat the Emberhorn Minotaur from Steve. And a Harrier Naga will empty out Kyle's hand. Yeah, and Steve's at three because of the attack from the un Unwavering Initiate, so. Just another land for Steve Rubin. Vizier of the True, his only action, and he is going to scoop up his cards. Kyle Bogomus taking down game one here versus Steve Rubin in the semifinals, Grand Prix Indianapolis. Yeah, perfectly lined up there by Kyle. Steve obviously on a mulligan and not having the best of opening hands or draws there, but hmm, I think Kyle's going to be pretty happy going into a game two or even three, if that should be the case. Let's take a live look in here. Andrew Funkhauser versus Andrew Cuneo. Yowza. Well, Oketra's Monument, hello here for Cuneo in play. We've seen this card in play for him previously in the quarterfinals. There is some spice in Cuneo's deck, of course, in the form of overwhelming splendor. Don't know if you saw that, Kenji. I did, actually. Oh, yes. Prompted it a was very, very delicious. quick scoop after that. It's one of the why one of the reasons why I think Andrew is so favored is his deck goes very, very wide, and even though a lot of his creatures are, are quite small, he has access to well, not just overwhelming splendor, I believe he has Hour of Revelation as well. Oh nice. Well, Andrew Funkhauser here, not to be outdone, is playing pull for tomorrow. Oh, my. <laughs> Let's draw some cards. We saw his deck earlier as well. He's playing things like River Hoopoo, uh, a couple of pyramids as well to draw land, to draw cards. It looks like he's pulling into next week with that much. Yeah, I mean, Andrew's deck is, is solid. It's just I don't think it can beat the powerful cards that Andrew has access to, given enough time, which... I mean, this game looks like it's going to be oh, yes. quite prolonged. Andrew should almost certainly win unless Andrew has either a way to counter a Splendor or just deal with it in his main deck. And I'm taking a look here. I think he has two countervailing wins. Okay. At least one. Yes, he has one in the main deck. Okay. Uh, actually, he only has one, but it is in the main deck. Manolith the play here for Funkhauser. Harrier Naga as well. Passes the turn. He also has a Winds of Rebuke, which he can use to bounce it, kind of unlocking the potential of his creatures. But the only big creature in Andrew's deck is um, Honored Hydra, which I believe you guys saw yes. in the previous game. But, like, look at this board state. Andrew's just developed, or Cuneo, on it, rather, <laughs> is just such a wide board with a Ketra's Monument. I, I, you know, who do you think is going to win? Probably Andrew. I would, I would guess Andrew is probably going to win all this right, game. All right, all right. We're getting an attack here and an unsummon from an, an eternalized creature that Cuneo had in play. 
just passes back here to Funkhauser. That wall of Forgotten Pharaohs getting in for tiny pings of damage thanks to a Desert of the Indomitable in play for Funkhauser. Well, we might actually see a wall of Forgotten Pharaohs attack this weekend. Andrew oh, Cunio, yeah, yeah, you're right. Cunio putting the <laughs> overwhelming splendor on Andrew Funkhauser. Turns the uh, wall of Forgotten Pharaohs in just a into a 1-1. One -one. I mean, I would attack just to give it its chance, you know? Sure, yeah. These pharaohs might be forgotten, but they're going to get in for one. Four cards in hand yet for Funkhauser. And like you said, Kenji, this is just a just a, a stalled out board state. So let's head back to our first match, which is uh, still in progress. Getting ready here. Game two. Kyle Bogum is currently up a game over Steve Rubin. Steve Rubin, an unfortunate mulligan last game. Ooh, yeah. looks like a nice draw off the top there. Ooh, steward of solidarity there for Steve Rubin. Can certainly get things going. Oh, yeah, this hand looks great for Steve. You can see that trial of zeal sitting there, a farm to market. He has the turn two drop. Kyle Bogomez, let's see if he can match the two drop of his own. He has plenty in the deck. And he will. A catcher's Avenger. We'll see how much Steve wants to kill that with a removal spell or just Ooh. develop out. Oh, nice. a very nice creature. Did not see that in his hand. Resolute Survivors. Yeah, love this card. And uh, works really well there with the Steward and ex Exert trigger. Yes. So Steve, every other turn, can get a 1-1 Vigilance creature while also draining Kyle for one. Seems good. Definitely not bad. Yeah, no rush to use the Trial of Zeal or hold up farm to market. Develop out your board. Keep applying the pressure. And uh, Kyle's going to want to find one of his ambuscades real quick. Oketra's Avenger gets in for an exerted attack, hitting Steve for three. Unwavering Initiate is the follow-up, and here we see that exert of the Steward of Solidarity. We're going to get a a gain and a drain, red and white style. <laughs> so a damage and a gain of a life. There's a warrior for Steve. Let's get this Vizier of the True online. Oh, that would be very gross. We have a uh, Jero's Resolve in hand, as well as you mentioned that Farm to Market Trial of Zeal, and see, we'll see if we're firing that off right now. And indeed, we are on the Unwavering Initiate, enabling an attack here for Steve Rubin. I like this a lot. Steve's, you know, using his, well, sorcery speed removal, of course, but uh, it's while Kyle's tapped out, this lets him get in for four extra points of damage. The Resolute Survivors doesn't need to exert because, you know, there's no reason to currently. He'd rather have it untapped the following turn since Kyle doesn't have anything except that Avenger, which is exerted. And so, in, in, in conjunction with the Jero's resolve, he's going to be able to really push the pressure here. Harrier Naga, the play here for Kyle Bogomis, and a tap land, irrigated farmland will pass a turn back to Steve. Who still has a bit of work to do on Kyle's life total. But definitely has some tools in his hand to yeah, get the job done. Going to see a pre-combat firebrand archer and then probably... An attack here from Steve. I'm not sure if he has an extra land in his hand to hold up farm. Oh, he does. Oh, he does. In come the Resolute Survivors. So, pretty easy block here for Kyle. He needs to get rid of that, and if Steve's using a trick, then that's fine. But yep. He is getting drained. There's the Resolve. Or rather, just pinged, pinged from the, from the uh, archers. Archer. Mm -hmm. Steve passes back. Kyle Bogomez just without a catcher's Avenger in play currently, but a grip full of cards. It's a good old-fashioned creature fight here, Kenji. Red-white versus green-white. You thought there was a fight on TV last night. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Harrier Naga is the play here as well as a Mummy Paramount for Kyle. Resolute Survivors once again will gain and drain for Steve Rubin with its exert trigger bringing in another warrior. To be fair, there wasn't much of a fight in either this game <laughs> or last night. Yeah. Planes off the top there for Steve. Yeah, I, 
I think Steve's in pretty great position right now. I mean, it, it's kind of hard for him to attack with only one trick in his hand, the farm. Um, he doesn't really want to trade off his resolute survivors. He doesn't really want to proactively use this farm here. He might actually just pass, but every turn that you know the game prolongs is effectively half a token for him and another drain. So. Yeah, Steve can sit back and just sort of develop his board, you know, pretty slowly, but uh, at least it gives him something to do while he doesn't have much action in hand. Yeah, Kyle, we know, has not too many larger creatures, just kind of the middling creatures, but a lot of nice tricks and, well, the three ambuscades to go along with them. But once Steve goes too wide, it's going to be hard for Kyle to kind of press in there unless he can find like a saving grace to act as a, a safe passage type effect. And it's really interesting to me, uh, cards like Resolute Survivors, giving red-white access to longer game inevitability that it, a kind of deck like that normally doesn't have. Mm -hmm. It's weird, though, because it's in red-white, so yeah. you'd think you would just be attacking, 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 but the Steward of Solidarity is really allowing Steve to do some nice work. All right, a second Mummy Paramount will trigger the first. Here for Kyle. Yeah, and Kyle can attack in with some of his 3-3s three if he really wants to. Only problem is Aketra's Avenger is not a great blocker, so if any creature wants to attack, it's probably that one. Binding Mummy here for Kyle. Okay. Another yeah. zombie. So it's possible that the 4-4 Mummy Paramount gets in this turn. He does have enough good blockers to not make that too problematic. Seems like a pretty good attack. Yeah, and even... Yeah, here we more. go. A catcher's Avenger coming in to the fray as well. Kyle knows he can't just sit back forever. Especially now with that resolute survivor on the battlefield. Steve Rubin here contemplating double block. Remember, he is holding a farm to market. Steve still had a healthy 19 life. This hit is for 10 damage, though, so I doubt he wants to take it all. Only one land left open there for Kyle as well, so he doesn't have to worry about something. Uh, just a Jero's Resolve. Does Kyle have Jero's Resolve? Take a look at the deck. Oh, I've got it over here. No, he does not. Okay. So it looks like we might just see a chump on the Mummy Paramount. Right, and so Steve's going to fall down to 13, both players. I believe that was just another land there for Steve. Yeah, it looks like a mountain. Steve does have plenty of cards in his deck that really blow this board state wide open. Here, he's getting in for a tech of his own there with the survivors and the archer. Looks like he's fine. Potentially trading if he doesn't want to farm here. And indeed he is. The resolute archer will trade there with the binding mummy. Plays the mountain, passes the turn. Yeah, it's a little bit awkward attacking with the resolute. He wants to race, but the resolute holds off basically most of Kyle's creatures should he not have another zombie, but access to unwavering initiative yes. in the graveyard is going to make that really hard. Here we go. Pump up your two mummy paramounts there with that unwavering initiate some balm. Yeah, and... How about three, three threes coming at you? Yeah, Kyle's turned the corner really nicely. He had multiple turns where he played two cards, Harrier Naga and Mummy Paramount in one of them, and then Binding Mummy and another Mummy Paramount, I believe, in the following turn, so... He just found more actual cards than Steve did. Whereas Steve was sitting on the synergy between Steward of Solidarity and Resolute Survivors, Kyle was actually finding two twos and three threes. And here we could see an activation of the Steward of Solidarity to create another warrior token, which would gain Steve a life and drain Kyle for one. Also a farm, as we mentioned, in hand for Steve. Yeah, this is just not good enough, though. Steve's going to really have to draw one of his 
bigger creatures here to make this work. The nice thing for him is that Binding Mummy's gone, so he doesn't have to worry about, you know, if, say, he draws a True Heart Twins. Right. Kyle finding another mummy and being able to tap down his, his largest blocker. Harry Naka is, in fact, going to get farmed here from Steve. Now he's got a decision to make if he wants to block one of those mummy paramounts, the warrior creature token that he just created there. Will gain a life. Two lands. Oh, no. Oof, Steve can not draw any spells Yeah, so and I far. think he's only running 16 lands in the deck. Oh, so. brutal. Currently just a little glut. He's going to have to leave back the Resolute Survivors this turn. Steve or if he doesn't, he could, in theory, attack with the Survivors, exert it, drain for one, hope that Kyle doesn't block with the... Uh, Unwavering Unwaver initiate, initiate, and then top deck, say, a Glorybringer <laughs> off the top. <laughs> I mean, I think that's always his plan, top decking a Glorybringer. Oh, but Kyle looks like, oh, <gasps> no. Ooh, Vizier of the True. Yeah, and that is effectively a Binding Mummy activation, as a Ketra's Avenger almost certainly always going to exert it when it attacks at this point, because it doesn't want to just trade off for one of the 1-1s. One it's also going to get to tap the Resolute Survivors. Yeah, that definitely changes things here for Kyle. And he is, in fact, swinging in with the team, exerting the Avengers, saying those survivors cannot block. Tap. Yeah, so Steve doesn't have to block with both of the tokens if he doesn't want to. I believe he can just chump block one of the three power creatures, take seven, go to one. Oof. Steve here lining up his blocks. I think he wants to put both in front of that unwavering initiate embalm token. Yeah, this makes more sense because the initiate has vigilance anyway. So if he's just chumping with one, what's the use? You know, he'd rather deal with it in an efficient manner. All right, that is going to be Steve's blocks. Unwavering initiate will go away for Kyle. Steve gets to untap. He's at one and draws another land. <laughs> yeah, Steve had a few turns there to find something else, but looks like it just wasn't in the cards this time. Literally. But, you know, you never let him know. Right, and he's going to do his due dil diligence, making sure he's not actually dead. He's at least going to gain one life off of the Steward of Solidarity exerting itself. Here we go. Resolute Survivors will exert to bring him back up to two. Kyle down to eight. He will be able to make a blocker there. With the Steward of Solidarity. We'll gain him another life up to three. So the thing is, Kyle's racking his brain. Could Steve actually have two open fires here? And no, the answer is no. He would have just <laughs> used the open fire on the Vizier of the True and then got in. Yeah. But those three cards certainly are spooky. Right. <laughs> so Kyle's going through the, motion, or the cards, trying to remember what were in Steve's deck. And it looks like he opted not to block. Heads All up right. Play. Those uh, mummy paramounts will untap. A catcher's avenger remain tapped. Yeah, and there we have it. Kyle's going to attack in with the team. Steve's going to extend the hand. There we go. Kyle Bogomes defeating Steve Rubin here in the semifinals. Two games to zero. Kyle advancing to the finals here at Grand Prix Indianapolis. Let's take a live look in here. Andrew Funkhauser versus Andrew Cuneo. Andrew Cuneo up a game. Ford State seems relatively stable now that Cuneo has cast an illusory wrappings on those Shimmer Scale Drake. Edifice of Authority gets to hold down the Harrier Naga. Uh, well. Sunscorch Champion 
I believe, is the eternalized token in play. Adoran Pouncer also on the table for Cuneo. Yeah, Andrew Funkhauser has access to more card advantage currently. That Sunset Pyramid doing a lot of work, but I think I see an overwhelming splendor in Cuneo's hand. <sighs> so, should he be Good able grief. to hit, well, <laughs> three, four, five, six, two more lands? Just two more. The game probably wraps up pretty quickly from there. All right, here's an Honored Hydra for Funkhauser. Okay. Obviously a good card, but with the Edifice on the battlefield, you know, and the 4-4 champion holding off everything but the Hydra, it's going to be very, very hard for Funkhauser to develop a meaningful offense. You're right, Kenji. It is in his hand. And you know Funkhauser is just like, <laughs> do not play another land. Do not play another land. Sunset Pyramid drawing Funkhauser some cards here. Yeah, and we mentioned it earlier when we looked at uh, these two players during this round. Honored Hydra, the only card for Funkhauser that can really do some real damage. But with the Edifice on board, you know, right? Funkhauser is just going to have to sit can't. here and wait for the end to come. <laughs> that's so grim, Kenji. Oh. A splendid death, how about? Yeah, sure. I mean, that's what the denizens of Amonkhet wanted back right. before they, well, Nicobolus came and... Uh, oh, that's a spoiler. What? Nicobolus comes? Uh, yeah, Kenji. I, you know what? I can't... You can't blame me. You've had enough time. All right. <laughs> He's a literal card. <laughs> Last draw here off the Sunset Pyramid for Funkhauser. But like you said, he just can't get in. That Shimmer Sail Drake being locked down, essentially becoming an O2, was uh, pretty important for Cuneo as well, as you mentioned. Meanwhile, that edifice keeps ticking up. Naga Oracle here for Funkhauser. He'll get a chance to see if there's anything he can do to help push through damage. Some islands will hit the graveyard. Yeah, barring removal for the Splendid Agony, or sorry, the Overwhelming Splendor, the only way I've seen a player beat that card is if the opponent's already low enough that they can just swarm in with 1-1s one right. to finish the game. And, well, Andrew's at 8 mana now. Here we go. Are you ready to see something beautiful and terrifying? Andrew Cuneo. <laughs> Not yet slamming it onto the board, though. Well, he knows Funkhauser does have that one countervailing wins. Yeah, that's true. And so he doesn't really feel like running in it into that if he doesn't need to. And there's there's no rush, right? Edifice turns off the Honored Hydra. And uh, the 4-4 Sunscourge champion just holds af back everything else. Oh, wait, is the countervailing wins in the graveyard already? I think I, think I see I the wins in the graveyard. I think it is, Kenji. He did have, did he, did he only have access to one in his pool? Right. All right, well. Now, he does have the Seer of the Mindful on the battlefield, but as soon as Andrew Funkhauser taps out enough to where he can't return the countervailing wins and cast it in the same turn, Andrew might pull the trigger. I think he only had three mana last turn, though. Well, now he's almost certainly going to do it. Yeah, there's Scrounger of Souls for Funkhauser. Funkhauser only with two open mana currently, I believe. That's what I see. Oh, well, maybe not. Andrew content with other means. Unwavering initiate, pass the turn. First, we're going to scry with the uh, pyramid. Kunu content to sit back on his army he's amassed here including the Sunscourge Champion, Unwavering Initiate, Adorn Pouncer, Anointer Priest. That edifice doing major work, holding down the Honored Hydra. All right, we're going to see this bring back countervailing wins for Funkhauser. Oh, no, Unsummon. Yeah, Funkhauser had access to a lot of nice... Cards in his graveyard. I think there's an ambuscade over there. There's that countervailing wins we were talking about. Unsummon was the hit in this particular instance. So that will deal with that Sunscourge champion from Cuneo. Yeah, and again, we mentioned that it was holding back basically the entirety 
a Funkhauser team. So. so it makes sense why he made this play, and now he can swing in. In comes the Harrier Naga. Naga Oracle, Giant Spider, and Scrounger of Souls. All right, we've got a Sandblast there on the Scrounger. So Funkhauser will not be gaining any life. Lining up some blocks here. Cuneo doesn't mind his adorned pouncer heading to the graveyard, nor the unwavering initiate for that matter. Naga, or excuse me, or Oasis Ritualist is the play here for Funkhauser. All right, is Cuneo going to pull the trigger? This would be an ideal turn to do so. He also gets to hold up the edifice because he drew another land. Now, maybe Andrew, who knows there's an Hour of Revelation in his deck, doesn't want to just use it quite yet, but he's going to need to do something soon. I think he's going to eternalize this Adorned Pouncer, mm -hmm. just giving him access once again to a creature that holds off all of Funkhauser's board. Yeah, and we're back to the position where Edifice plus 4-4 four, four means Andrew can sit back. All right, we're going to scry to the bottom there with that pyramid for Funkhauser. And if I'm Funkhauser, I don't think Cuneo has it from the way that he's playing. Yeah, that, that would make sense. We mentioned this earlier, but the only thing Andrew Funkhauser has access to would be that Windsor Rebuke to deal with Splendor just momentarily. Rampaging Hippo here. He's going to get Essence scattered. Funkhauser passes the turn. Cuneo still with things to do other than cast that overwhelming splendor. We've got an unwavering initiate in the graveyard. Yeah, Anointed Priest just gaining random bits of life for every token creature that's been entering back. And that's what it looks like here. Yep. Oh. Maybe not. Oh. Five, six, seven. Oh. And one more. Okay, there we go. Eight it is for Overwhelming Splendor. Hits the table for Andrew Cuneo. Here in the semis. All right, we're going to see it cycle here from Funkhauser. In response, otherwise the Oasis oh, Ritualist would not be able to do anything. And now Andrew's like, okay, I can right, attack now. Let's get in. Yeah, over, Overwhelming Splendor, <laughs> just a gross card. <laughs> well, it's disgusting. Well, yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> Funkhauser won't even be able to embalm the Hydra now if it dies. Nope. There's 1-1s. One 5-1-1s, one one to be precise. I believe this, do we have the same question there with that Shimmer Scale Drake? Oh, no, because it, it has no minus 1, minus 1 counters on oh, it, yeah, so okay. it doesn't die. Yeah. Cuneo here still considering his attacks. All of his creatures now outclass Funkhausers, despite the fact that Funkhausers were pretty big and beefy. Overwhelming Splendor, quite an interesting card that uh, is really having its heyday late in this format. And it looks like Adorn Pouncer getting into the fray here for Cuneo. It's a very quick clock. Eight damage. Yeah, 4-4 four, four double striker. Pretty serious business here. Yeah, I'm trying to concoct a way that Funkhauser can potentially get out of this, but he can't even activate his Sunset Pyramid. No, Funkhauser will go to 12. All right, he's just going to scoop him up. Andrew Cuneo extends the hand. And that is Cuneo advancing to our finals here at wow. Grand Prix Indianapolis. Two games to zero over Andrew Funkhauser. More magic, including our finals after these messages.